Hi, this is Roger Nadlao, a uh, student of the University of Southeastern Philippines. I'm going to show you a video about the digestive system and are we supposed to be vegetarians or are we designed to eat meat? Enjoy the video. The primary functions of the digestive system are the breakdown of food, called digestion, and absorption of nutrients. Digestion begins in the mouth, where the teeth break food into smaller particles during mastication. Salivary glands, located near the oral cavity, secrete saliva, which begins chemical digestion and keeps the food moist. As food is swallowed, the soft palate blocks the upper pharynx to prevent food from entering the nasal cavity, and multiple voluntary muscles in the face, neck, and tongue contract, pushing food particles through the pharynx. The food passes over the epiglottis, which prevents food entry into the respiratory system, and then into the esophagus, which connects the pharynx to the stomach. The one-way movement of the food mass, now called a bolus, is controlled by wave-like involuntary muscle contractions. This movement is known as peristalsis. The bolus now enters the stomach. Folds in the stomach wall, called rugae, allow for expansion as the stomach fills. Stomach cells secrete hydrochloric acid, pepsinogen, and various regulatory hormones that chemically digest the bolus. Muscular contractions in the stomach churn its contents to further break down the bolus and mix it with stomach secretions to form a thick liquid called chyme. Chyme exits the stomach through the pyloric sphincter and enters the small intestine, the major site of nutrient absorption. The small intestine consists of three parts the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. Bile from the liver and digestive enzymes from the pancreas empty into the duodenum to aid in digestion. Absorbed nutrients pass from the lumen of the small intestine into blood and lymph. Chyme not absorbed in the small intestine enters the large intestine. As it passes through the cecum and ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid colon, water and salts are absorbed and chyme is converted into feces. The rectum stores feces until nervous stimulation initiates the defecation reflex, resulting in elimination through the anal canal. We know that meat, and red meat in particular, has been linked to cancer for a long time with research showing that eating beef, pork and lamb can raise the risk of deadly tumours. But scientists now think they know exactly what is causing this effect. It seems our body views meat as a foreign invader and sparks a toxic immune response. Researchers have always been puzzled about how other mammals could eat a diet high in red meat without any adverse health consequences. New research published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences has recently found that beef, pork and lamb contain a sugar which is naturally produced by other carnivores, but not humans. So what this means is when humans eat red meat, our body triggers an immune response to the foreign sugar, producing antibodies which spark inflammation and eventually cancer. In carnivores, the immune system does not kick in because the sugar, called N-glycolyl neuraminic acid, otherwise known as NEU5GC, is already in their bodies. Scientists at the University of California proved that mice which were genetically engineered so that they did not produce NEU5GC naturally developed tumours when they were fed the sugar. Dr. Barkey Professor of Medicine and Cellular and Molecular Medicine at the University of California said, This is the first time we have directly shown that mimicking the exact situation in humans increases spontaneous cancers in mice. And this work may also help explain potential connections of red meat consumption to other diseases exacerbated by chronic inflammation such as atherosclerosis and type 2 diabetes. So that's the end of the video. Are we humans or is it?